What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the best teams in the Great League meta right now, as Great League is coming back tomorrow, as you guys can see from the Go Battle League post, we have the rotation coming up on September 22nd. Now, we're going to go through two different lists, 10 teams on each list, so 20 teams in total to talk about. And the first is going to pvpoke.com. And this is an amazing resource. I know most of you watching already utilize this website, but we're just gonna explain briefly for those who haven't. PV Poke is the one-stop shop for everything. Go Battle League. You have rankings for Open Great League, as you can see right here. You can do one-on-one -on -one battles to kind of see how Pokemon perform if we have like Obama Snow versus Abra, right? You can do meta Pokemon, obviously, but you can kind of see who's going to be winning these matches. You also have a team building section, which we're not covering today. I know we're talking about teams, but this is a great place to utilize um, team builder. But what we're going to talk about today is the training section. And a lot of you might not know this. If you guys go to the training tab right here, you can actually do PVP battles on PV Poke against an AI to practice with the team that you're going to run for the upcoming rotation. And the reason why we're talking about this, if we go ahead and go Great League, and you can go, um, they'll auto tap. We'll just go with a team. We'll just go Metacham. We'll go Azumarill. And we'll go Reggie Steel, right? Just a, just a random team. If you hit train, you'll actually get into a battle right here against an AI. And you can go ahead and tap your screen just like it's Go Battle League right and practice this is so crucial to learn the basics of the game especially when you don't have we're just going to go ahead and show you just kind of how it works especially when you may not have these pokemon yet or you're working on them you can practice with them before investing the stardust and the reason why i'm showing you guys this training section is because from this training section from you the community practicing we get top performing Pokemon in the meta and top performing teams. And the top performers that we have right here being Pokemon like Dugong, Gligar, Mantine, Carbink, Alolan Sandslash, Lickitung, Metacham. It makes a lot of sense, right? Based on the meta that we're seeing, these Pokemon are performing the best. And if you scroll down a bit, you also get the top performing teams. Now these are teams utilized either by the AI or trainers um, in uh, in the battles that we just showed as you can see the data is sampled from both players and bots in the uh, elite and champion difficulties on the training battles just like i showed you so the first team we're going to talk about here is gligar azumarill and sableye if you go ahead and click on this little eyeball right here it brings you to the team building section and it'll break down what this team is weak against, what it's strong against. As you can see, you have three fantastic answers to Metacham. And with Metacham being the number one Pokemon in the meta right now, that's obviously a fantastic, but you start to see core break opportunities. So Lickitung has a core breaking opportunity right here. It doesn't mean it can beat this whole team by itself, but it can do well against the team. Same with Pokemon like Pelipper, for example. And you can see this as you scroll down. Potential threats is what we're looking at right here. And the potential threats for this team, which is important. This is going to cascade into the other teams that we're talking about in the graphic later on in this video. These are the Pokemon that you kind of have to watch out for and you need to understand what they can do against your team so you can overcome them, right? And as you can see, these Pokemon, right, they core break, but nothing's extremely dominant. What I mean by that is see this circle right here with the, uh, the white circle? That's Walrein against Gligar. And obviously, Walrein, Powder Snow, and uh, Ice School Spear is going to be taking out a Gligar very, very easily with that ground flying typing. So, when you have a lot of non filled in circles, that means these matchups are manageable and determined by energy and shields. So, team number one looked pretty strong. Team number two right here is going to be Swampert. It can be Shadow. If you don't have Shadow, obviously try normal. Gligar and Reggie Steel. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the core breaks for this team. Metacham, that's going to be a tough one. Now, the reason why is because Metacham has access to counter and ice punch. Ice punch obviously covering Gligar. 
and Counter doing very well against Registeel and Swampert. But you and I both know just because that is the case doesn't mean a Medicham isn't going to get absolutely destroyed by a Hydro Cannon or Aerial Lace coverage here from Gligar or Zap Cannons from Registeel. So everything you got to kind of filter through a grain of salt, but you need to understand you don't want to have a Medicham load up on energy against this team because it's going to backfire. So as we can see, this team actually pretty well balanced where the only Pokemon you need to worry about is going to be Medicham and Whizcash and Medicham is completely manageable like I said Hydro Cannon, Aerial Ace, and Zap Cannon. So this again looking like a very strong team. Team number three, Alolan Sandslash, Azumarill, and Medicham. Now this has been a popular one. This was very good last season. I don't know who the original creator was. Maybe you can let me know down in the comments. I believe it was a fellow content creator. But this team has been putting in some work. Um, it has been obviously the coverage here fantastic and as you can see the core breakers here gonna be defense form Deoxys, Araquanid, and Alomomola. Now Araquanid and Alomomola are not too common. Defense form Deoxys is and in this situation you really don't want defense form Deoxys to have the opportunity to farm down Alolan Sandslash because that's where you get in trouble. But both the Zumeral and Metachamp can hit it for neutral damage with Ice Beam, Play Rough, Hydro Pump, or um, Ice Punch there on Metachamp. So that is actually, again, a very, very strong team. Now, something I forgot to mention, uh, maybe you guys already let, let everyone know down in the comments, but we are about five minutes, six minutes into this video, is you can go to the advanced options here and show Shadow Pokemon. You can also increase the scorecard right here so that you can um, see a better understanding of some of the more popular Pokemon or more popular Shadow Pokemon. And it gives you a better visual graphic right here of all the Pokemon you're facing off against. And still, it's the same thing. Shadow Hypno now pops up into here as a potential core breaker. And that's going to be if it is in fact running a Fire Punch um, for Alolan Sandslash and then Thunder Punch for Azumarill. It doesn't necessarily need Shadow Ball in order to beat Metacham, right? Because it's already doing a lot of neutral damage with confusion while resisting counter. Team number four, Mantine, Registeel, and Shadow Venusaur. Mantine, I think, has been flying under the radar. I think people forget that it has access to Aerial Ace. And again, it's just like Pelipper, the water flying typing. It's been extremely weak to Lantern, but the core of Knocked Out Lantern has kind of disappeared. Lantern's still good, right? It's still popular. But it's not as prevalent as Knockdown Lantern have been for the last year. Um, so as we can see with this team, very solid coverage. They do need to watch out for Galarian Stunfisk here. Rock Slide, Earthquake, and both Earthquake and Rock Slide in this matchup. But Mantine having access to Aerial Ace, which did get updated, the high energy gain from Wing Attack is going to prove to be very well. Now there's other core breakers with this team, a bigger list than we've seen before. Big ones, obviously Galarian Stunfisk and Defense Form Deoxys, which you can manage with this team, right? You have Ice Beam for neutral damage, you have Focus Blast, and you do have Frenzy Plant. But in this situation, you're going to have to be at a shield advantage um, in order to take that down. So it might be a case of if they're reading that it's Galarian Stunfisk and a Flyer in the back, Maybe you let Mantine go down and come in with Venusaur and load up on energy. That way Reggie Steel potentially has a better matchup to Core Break because Galarian Stunfisk is out of the way. Sorry if I'm speeding past all of this stuff for you if you're not able to keep up. With, uh, uh, sorry, but my, that's how my brain works. Um, anyways, other good Core Breakers here. Talonflame is another one, but again, Talonflame going to be doing resisted damage to Mantine outside of Brave Bird, so it does need to watch out for that, and Registeel does have access to Zap Cannon, so again, another solid team right here. Team number five, we got Diggersby coming in, and Diggersby got an update this season with uh, Scorching Sands, which is a very nice addition to it. Doesn't have any core breaks here in the top dense meta that we see right away, but it does have core breaks as you come down. Not very popular ones, right? Wobbuffet, how often do you see that? Not really. There is Walrein, which did used to be uh, king of the meta back in the day before it got nerfed. Still pretty good now, but definitely not as prevalent in the meta that we've um, as it was before. Rainy cast form, super spicy, but not really seen. Talonflame is around, and Alolan Raichu is rarely seen outside of specialty cups like the Psychic Cup, which is currently going on. So this team definitely has some play, and it comes down um, to the Diggersby utilizing or being utilized, I should say, as the safe swap here. 
and that is determined based on what do we see with this team. We've got Mantine, we've got Diggersby, we've got Alolan Sandslash. Alolan Sandslash is double weak to counter, right? Steel Ice Typing. If it safe swaps in, a Metacham is most likely going to be in the back just because of how teams are built, especially with a Mantine lead. So Diggersby is going to be a better option on the safe swap. As you can see, it has a light circle and not filled in circle while Sandslash as a hard soul crease. So you want to utilize this as a safe swap and with hyper beam and scorching sands you're looking pretty strong. All right moving into the next one we got Diggersby, Cresselia, and Sableye. This is going to be a pretty interesting team. Cresselia hasn't been used a lot but that doesn't mean it's not good. Now I think Sableye in this situation is probably going to be the safe swap just because Cresselia doesn't have a lot of options to fight back against Reggie Steel. Um, but with there are a lot of core Pokemon that core break here. Lickitung, Mandibuzz, Pelipper, Superior, uh, Meganium, the list goes on and on. You guys can see it right here. And some of these are very common, right? So a Charizard, a Venusaur, Superior, Pelipper, Mandibuzz, and Lickitung all do very, very well against this team. But why I think this team shines um, is the, uh, the baiting out a Steel with a Sableye. Um, if that is going to be the case and you do have double coverage to potential fighters there on the lead and Cresselia with the Grass Knot, um, again covering Pokemon like Swampert, which Diggersby can't, is weak to because of its part ground typing. Alright, moving to the next one, we got a Lantern team finally. Lantern, make it great again. I don't think the, uh, I know the Spark buff was uh, pretty controversial, whether it was a buff or a nerf, but overall I think, I think Lantern is still very, very good in the meta. Um, so it's basically on even for me. But as we can see with this team, Lantern, Gligar, and Venusaur, um, it's not really core broken from the top dense meta, but as we go down, there are some outliers. Obama Snow being a big one right there, a huge one. In fact, this is a uh, this is kind of a red flag warning when you see something like this. This is where you start to consider, actually, do I want to run this team? Is a bomb of snow very popular? Is it the season where a bomb where um, snowver snowvers? Yeah, a, a bomb of snow's pre-evolution is spawning in the wild. That's a bigger tell to seeing more bomb of snow because based on wild Pokemon, right? Because people are coming. Oh, I caught this Pokemon. I want to use it in Go Battle League. Obama Snow right there, very big core breaker um, and uh, obviously very strong. So this team might be something you want to be careful about, but understand your weaknesses as well. If you see Obama Snow, you know it's going to be a tough battle for you, right? All right, moving to the next one, we have Dubwool right here. Dubwool, Defense Form, Deoxys, and Pelipper. Now, Dubwool is a very spammy Pokemon, and Defense Form, Deoxys, and Pelipper both make for great safe swaps, and that's because their ability to hit for neutral damage back against whatever swaps into them. So, if you safe swap a Defense Form, Deoxys, and a Sableye comes into that matchup, you can still hit neutral with stuff like Rock Slide or Thunderbolt. Pelipper as well, if a Reggie Steel swaps in, a Bastiodon swaps in, a Galarian Stunfist swaps in, not necessarily a Lantern, right? Not, not necessarily a Lantern. Um, so I think it'll be dependent based on the lead that you faced off against. Um, and Double uh, is, again, pretty spammy, but Carbink right here looks to be core, broken, core breaking. And uh, looking at the rest of this, there are some good counters here, um, specifically Steelix, Mandibuzz, and Carbink. Um, Superior as well, which does have access to Aerial Ace. That got updated. I need, do need to try that Pokemon out. Toxapex, which used to be quite popular. And I haven't seen it too much lately. Um, and Meganium. So overall, this team I think is a bit better than the last one just because it's not extremely hard broken by a Pokemon that could be popular or could become popular. And finally, <laughs> Bastion, Metacham, and Shadow Victory Bell. I mean, come on. It doesn't get much better than this, right? You guys understand how this team goes. It's very popular. Obviously, it gets core broken by uh, its own Metachams, right? Because of the damage that it can put out if it's aligned to a Bastiodon. Gligar as well, having access to Wing Attack and Aerial Ace for both Metacham and Victory Bell and Dig um, for the Bastiodon. And those seem to be the big ones. Defense Form Deoxys as well um, does pretty good. But this team has been tried and true for a long time. Bastiodon, Metacham, Shadow Victory Bell. I mean, it's it's been common since Go Battle League was created. Um, and it's still showing strong here. Now, that is, I believe that was 10. 
I could be wrong. Um, now let's go to the other graphic that I have, and this is actually from Go Stadium. We're gonna go ahead and open this image in a new tab. Um, we have a graphic here from Go Stadium. I'm gonna zoom in as well. Go Stadium, an amazing resource. They do have a Discord community and a website. I utilize their website to check my PVP IVs, and they also have a I guess it would be a professional roster of battlers who compete in the Play Pokemon tournament. Um, and we got uh, some of those players here. You might recognize their names and their teams that they built at the start of the season for the Great League and uh, showing core breakers here, which is why I was talking about core breakers this whole time because that's what you need to recognize and be able to potentially take advantage of or leverage, have that knowledge of what core breaks your team and how to adapt to that. So first we got Inadequance with uh, Carbink, Medicham, and Venusaur. Uh, Medicham being the safe swap, we do have core breakers there of Nidoqueen, Trevenant, and Alolan Sandslash. Uh, the Alolan Sandslash, pretty popular, so they're gonna have to watch out, but they can still do neutral damage um, with Carbink and Medicham, or tons of damage with Medicham. And Venusaur as well, it's Frenzy Plant, actually hurts, so Alolan Sandslash has to watch out there. Now we have Scafo, I think you guys can see it, Scafo 99, Medicham, uh, sorry, Lickitung, Medicham, and Defense Form Deoxys, so this is going to be a ABB formation. This is more of like an ABC formation right here, similar cross coverages potentially in the back, but that's definitely more ABC. This is ABB, and what I mean by that is there's a lead, and there's two Pokemon in the back who fulfill basically the same role and they probably have the same typing. So it's gonna be Medicham, Defense Form Deoxys with double Psychic, and the safe swap here with Medicham. Now notice the move set as well. Dynamic Punch and Ice Punch. And they say uh, a simple ABB team, Lickitung clears ghosts, uh, Psychic Fighters in the back. Dynamic Punch is for a better matchup versus Reggie Steel. And some core breakers here are going to be Mandibuzz, Noctowl, and Umbreon. Now we do have Gudok 1996 with Galissapod, Registeel, and Diggersby, an ABB team once again. Like I said before, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same types, but they have to fulfill the same role. And Galissapod protects Registeel, um, and Diggersby from Fighters, and Swampert, Hyper Beam, Diggersby covers the Flyers better. So we do have a Scorching Sands, Hyper Beam, and Registeel as the safe swap. Core Breakers here, gonna be Pelipper, Charizard, and Azumarill. Moving down, we got a Mind Joke with a ABB team as well, Medicham, Diggersby, and Alolan Sandslash. We do have the Diggersby as safe swap with Hyper Beam once again. This seems to be very popular, so it does better against the Flyers. Um, Diggersby is the bait out uh, for Medicham, so if you lose lead, get that Medicham that is likely in the back out onto the field against the Diggersby. That way Alolan Sandslash can sweep right there. We do have Enhoff with a team of Alolan Sandslash, Tapu Fini, and Pelipper. So a double water backline with Tapu Fini being the safe swap. Um, Tapu Fini and Pelipper cover Alolan Sandslash's weaknesses to Fighters and Swamper. And Tapu Fini also baits out potential Electric or Reggie Steel right there. So really nice ABB team and Pelipper obviously very, very solid, especially if you get rid of Lanterns that could be in the back. All right, we got a Frag and Wagon here with an a another ABB team. This is going to be a double flyer backline of Medicham, Pelipper, and Mandibuzz. Safe swap of Pelipper, and it is core broken by Carbink, Frostlass, and Defense Form Deoxys. Next, we got Arrow here with a Water Gun Lantern, a Shadow Gligar safe swap with Night Slash and Dig instead of Aerial Ace on there in a Venusaur Closer. Classic arrow team, he says. Struggles against Alolan Sandslash, however, it can be extremely versatile if there is none. Whole team can beat a Carbink and Reggie Steel. So, definitely a uh, strong team outside of facing off against some of its core breakers, which is gonna be Alolan Sandslash and Abomasnow, and you also kinda gotta watch out for Altaria, cause you're doing all basically uh, neutral or resisted damage. Next, we got House Stark with Alolan Sand, Shadow Alolan Sandslash, Medicham, and Mandibuzz. So this is a ABC team. 
um, depending on how you look at it, psychic for that resistance to fighters, but we'll just kind of call it an ABC. Calls it a balanced team. Every Pokemon has its unique trait and stands out on its own as a self-centered meta Pokemon. You are core broken by Defense Form Deoxys, Quagsire, and Dunsparce, but overall, again, very, very strong. I'd be curious to see what the moveset there is on Mandibuzz. I think my assumption would be Snarl as the fast move, but some players do go for Air Slash. Um, so I think that'll be uh, your best guess. Maybe go with what PV Poke recommends at the time if you uh, if you decide to make this team. Next, we got Rise to Occasion with a Meganium, and then this is a unique opportunity here where both Pokemon in the back can be utilized as a safe swap, either Dugong or Defense Form Deoxys. It's a balanced team. Safe swap depends on the lead. Dugong debuffing opponent sets up either the lead or closer for energy. And that's what I love about Dugong is when you safe swap it, those icy winds set up the rest of your team. So you can come in and hard farm with Meganium or come in and hard farm with Defense Form Deoxys. It is core broken by Alolan Sandslash, Mandibuzz, and Trevenant. And finally, we have one more inadequance team. It's going to be a uh, Politoed lead with a safe swap Sableye and a Shadow Kanto Ninetales closer. Anti-meta team. Sableye baits out Carbink, Politoed. Um, Politoed can clean up Carbink and Swampert's that threaten K9, Ice Beam for the Mandibuzz and Altaria matchup. So that's gonna be an Ice Beam on Politoed. And again, a uh, Sableye safe swap. It, it is core broken by Venusaur, Lickitung, and Pelipper. And overall, these teams look very, very strong. I think if I was to uh, pick a team right now based on my own playstyle, I would probably go for one of these two teams right here by Scafo and Gudok because I love ABB bait out um, teams. So I'd go with the Lickitung team or the Galissapod team right here, but that's just my playstyle personally. That's not to take away from any of these other teams or your playstyle or their playstyle, right? Play to your strengths. My strengths is a uh, ABB solid safe swab bait out kind of team and that's what these provide for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That was a lot, a lot of info, a lot of knowledge, a lot of teams and hopefully some of this is able to help you all and maybe some teams here you guys can give a try. So like always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.